it is too late. Hey, I'm John Daniels. Welcome back to the, the channel for today's presentation. Uh, please do like and subscribe to make sure you always get notifications as when I release these new presentations. But today, <clears throat> is it worth it? Is it worth fixing? Not every problem in your life is worth fixing. Um, if if you're an overthinker, if you're a procrastinator, this is a big thing where you get hung on the past, you get hung on things, and you end up fighting battles you don't need to have. So let's jump straight in with today's presentation. Not everything in life is worth fixing. Have you ever found yourself stuck in a situation desperately trying to fix something that be, seems beyond repair? Well, I've been there too. And let me tell you, it's a road that often leads to nowhere. So grab a cuppa and settle in because today I want to share a bit of wisdom I've picked up on my own journey through the ups and downs of life. Buckle up, we're talking about why it's crucial to move on because not everything in life is worth fixing. Picture this, it's a rainy afternoon and you're frantically trying to piece together the fragments of something that's fallen apart. We've all been in those moments, desperately clinging to the hope that we can somehow mend what's broken. However, as a British bloke in his mid-40s, let me tell you, life has a funny way of teaching us that not everything is worth the effort. Now, I'm not suggesting we throw in the towel at the first sign of trouble. No, sir, we're definitely not saying that. What I am advocating for, the, for is a healthy dose of realism sprinkle of self-awareness and wisdom to discern when to persist and when to gracefully bow out. So let's talk about the agony of clinging on to things that are better left in the past. Trust me, you know, I've, I've had my fair share of moments where I stubbornly refused to let go, thinking I could fix what was irre irreparably damaged. The truth is, the longer you hold on to something that's draining you emotionally, mentally or physically, the deeper that pain becomes. Unresolved issues can fester like an unattended wound, affecting your well-being and relationships. Whether it's a broken friendship, a failing business venture or a toxic relationship, the toll it takes on your mental health is undeniable. The constant struggle to fix what's unfixable can lead to stress, anxiety and a sense of defeat. So let's have a look at a few tips of things that we that you can look at to, to help you understand in situation when is it best to walk away. And that's first one is about recognising the sunk cost fallacy. You've probably heard of the sunk cost fallacy. It's the the idea that the more you invest in something, the harder it is, becomes to let go. It's a classic trap that keeps us entangled in situations that are no longer serving us. Take, for example, a failing business venture. You've invested time, money and effort, but the returns are minimal. Instead of throwing good money after bad, you've got to consider cutting your losses and redirecting your energy elsewhere. If it's not going to work, it's not going to work. And there's only so much conviction you, you, you can go with that. Is you, you've got to at some point look at it realistically and go, I've given my best shot, That that's not happening. Two is about embracing the power of acceptance. Acceptance doesn't mean giving up. It means acknowledging reality. There are situations beyond our control and trying to fix the unfixable only leads to frustration. Uh, a personal example for me, I once spent months trying to mend a strained friendship. It wasn't till I accepted that some things are beyond my influence that I found peace and could focus on nurturing healthier connections. No beef, no fallout. Um, it, the friendship just ran its course and that's what happens in life sometimes. Sometimes you just got to walk away and maybe you'll reconnect in the future, but trying to force it is only going to cause more and more trouble at the time. Tip three is set realistic boundaries. 
it's essential to know your limits and establish boundaries to protect your well-being. Take a toxic relationship, for example. Constantly trying to fix a relationship where one party refuses to change can be emotionally draining. It can completely ruin you. It completely changes you. So setting boundaries doesn't make you selfish. It preserves your mental and emotional health. And if you haven't got either of them, you're not going to get anything. You're just going to be a slave to someone else. You're going to be playing other people's games all the time. You've got to learn from failure and pivot to, to how you use that as a positive. Failure isn't the end. It's a valuable teacher. Instead of beating yourself up over a failed project or endeavour, analyse what went wrong. Extract the lessons, take the learning, take the good stuff. What makes you stronger? What makes you more resilient? And then pivot. Um, a prime example is my attempt at DIY home renovation. Um, despite my best efforts, it, it turned into a disaster. <laughs> you know, I had holes in the wall, putting up curtain things that were just hanging and dangling. So every time you pulled the curtains, it came out the wall. You know, rather than dwelling on the mess, I learned to appreciate the expertise of professionals and redirected my efforts more wisely. So instead of being a cheapskate trying to do it myself, I just paid someone to come and do it properly. And I focused on something that I was a bit better at. Lesson learned. It's not always cheaper going with the cheap option. It can actually be more expensive in the long run. Tip five then is prioritizing self-care. You know, in the hustle and bustle of life, it's so easy to neglect self-care. It's so easy to think, I've got to do this, I've got to do this. And you're trying to always look for approval from other people or you're following what other people want you to do because it's important to them. Taking care of yourself is not selfish, it's a necessity. If you are constantly striving to fix everything around you, your well-being may suffer and that is not where you want to be. Um, remember the analogy of an oxygen mask on an aeroplane. You need to secure your own before assisting others. You've got to make sure you can breathe before helping other people to breathe if you can't breathe you can't help other people to breathe so in conclusion my friends here's the bottom line not everything in life is worth fixing there's immense power in recognizing when to move on to free yourself from the shackles of the unfixable it's a journey of self-discovery resilience and wisdom Embrace the art of letting go and you'll find that life becomes a canvas where new opportunities and experiences can flourish. I can attest that that journey is ongoing and it's never too late to start. So learn to discern between what's worth fixing and what's better left in the rearview mirror. Life's too short to waste on futile endeavours. Seize the opportunities that bring you joy, fulfilment and growth so thanks very much for joining me again today as always i really appreciate it and if you could like comment share subscribe um you know that would be really I would really appreciate that but this is a, a huge topic because we all have 24 hours in a day we all have one life to live and we all have the choice of where we spend our times and life isn't perfect. Life is going to give you ups and it's going to give you downs. And you've got to learn how to, to play both to kind of get that consistency in the middle. And you do that by understanding what is important to you. If you really know what you're focusing on and what you want to do, your boundaries that you set become stronger. Your resilience becomes stronger to when people are trying to pull you and take your time. Your ability to spot when people are swinging the lead and trying to take advantage of you becomes a lot clearer and you have a lot more clarity about what you're doing and instead of just feeling like a pack horse where you're just being dumped on by everyone all roads lead to you everyone expecting you to do everything you can just say no to it and you realize that this thing is fundamentally broken and it doesn't matter how much effort you put into it the only thing that's going to break after it is you because you're just carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. And if you're doing that, you become less useful in every other aspect of your life as well. 
um, you know, at what point do you call it? At what point do you go, I've enjoyed the experience and I'm going to take the learnings from it. I'm going to move on and I'm going to go find something else to, to enjoy. Um, you know, we've all probably been through it. Yeah, you look back at your friendships through all the walks of your life. You know, how many of your childhood friends are you still in contact with? How many people from school or university? How many people from each of the jobs? And, you know, you, you spend all this time with people and you think, oh, yeah, we're friends for life. We'll be mates for life. And the reality is you drift. You all go down different paths. You all learn things. And it doesn't mean that anyone's deliberately trying to be an arsehole or anything like that. It it just means that your goals and values and visions have changed in what you want and what you want to do and that's completely okay but accept it for what it is don't try and make it be something it isn't don't try and turn it into something it's not you know don't try and flog a dead horse don't invest in things that just aren't going to get you anything You've got to ask yourself is it worth it is this worth fixing because not everything needs to be fixed sometimes it's just the end of a chapter and that's the journey done the worst thing is trying to write the next chapter trying to extend the chapter trying to keep the story going for something that isn't there you know I, i've had it in i remember a relationship in the past i was with someone for a long time and i went down to visit my mum and stepdad and they just you know, my stepdad just turned around and went yeah but it's clear that you two are just friends now i didn't know that i don't think my partner at the time <laughs> but he was right he saw it and he called it out and it ended up, yeah, we did end up splitting up. But, in, you know, okay, it, was, it was hard and it was upsetting, but it was relatively amicable because I think, you know, the relationship, it was great. And I think we just ran our course and we both wanted different things in life moving forward. And instead of trying to flog it out or, you know, trying to <laughs> turn it into something it wasn't, we accepted that. And from there, we both got the positives because we both went on to meet people that, you know, we, we fell in love with and have got the relationships that we wanted so you know it, it can lead to good but if you're trying to go around in circles fixing something it, it, it's just it, you're going to miss the opportunities that you actually want anyway um, I feel like I'm prattling on a little bit from the presentation today so as always uh, thanks very much for watching please do like comment and share if you want to, to any more help over with overthinking procrastinating getting started on a new project please check out the links on uh, on the channels and websites i've got lots of cool stuff ranging from free and paid options that, that are there to help you um i've been john daniels and as always it's been a pleasure and i look forward to speaking with you on the next video